what is the Syriac Christian thought? How is the Syriac Christian thought distinguished from the Greek and Western Latin school of thought? What is so unique about Syriac Christianity? Well, Syriac Christians were part of the early Byzantine Empire until the Islamic conquest in the seventh century. So for the first seven centuries of Christianity, for 700 years, Syriac Christians were part of a multilingual and multicultural society where there were Christians of many languages. There were Greeks and Latins, Copts, Ethiopians, Armenians, and Syriac. The Greek and Latin theologians uh, tended to build their theology by bringing together the Bible and the great philosophers of ancient Greece and Rome, Plato and Aristotle in especially. Syriac Christians drew deeply on the Bible, but the, the legacy of the classical world was not, not there, not, it, it wasn't their natural home. So you had saints like Saint Ephraim, Saint Jacob of Sarug, who drew deeply on the Bible with ancient Semitic um, cultures. There was a very beloved form of hymns where you uh, you would have um, you would tell a biblical story by having alternating verses between a, a choir of women and a choir of men, um, imagining the voices of two biblical figures. Let's say the Virgin Mary and the Archangel Gabriel when he came to tell her. Um, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with you. Blessed are you among women, to say that she would bear a child. So in the Syriac tradition, we have we have many sermons about this, but we have many hymns that tell the story as a conversation between the Virgin Mary and the Archangel Gabriel. For many verses, as Mary argues, I know how women get pregnant, and I'm not pregnant. And the Archangel Gabriel says, The Lord is going to do this. And you know, they have this argument. Well, this is a very ancient Semitic tradition. It goes back 2,000 years earlier than Christianity. Before Christ, to have a, 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 a an argument between two characters to try to establish what is the truth, what is the best way to understand something. So Syriac Christians had a very ancient past in Syria to draw on. It wasn't that of Plato or Aristotle. They could read those in translation, but they had their own native roots and they brought tremendous vitality. Saint Ephraim, Saint Jacob, the greatest poetry, the most beautiful, exquisite poetry in Christian history. This is the work of Syriac theologians and the influence of these thinkers, such as Saint Ephraim and Saint Jacob. The influence left a lasting imprint even on Byzantine liturgy and of course as a living tradition now in the liturgy of the Syriac churches in our present time. So this is a, a great and lasting legacy. Of course I've only mentioned um, Saint Ephraim and Saint Jacob. There are many, many uh, theologians over the many centuries of Syriac Christianity. It's a living tradition, all of these all of these many, many centuries. That's good to hear. So it's more kind of earthy, like, you know, the, the conversations um, addressing to the common people. Uh, it's a living faith. I mean, you know, it's more, not so much philosophical, correct? Okay. Right. They do. Many of the, the most important Greek and Latin theologians wrote very academic, uh, philosophical discourses so that, um, of course, if you were very learned, you could read these. <laughs> but, uh, and Saint Ephraim was a great teacher. He taught priests and deacons and deaconesses. He taught uh, the choirs who would sing in the liturgy. So he taught, he taught the people who would, who would perform the liturgy. And then he also wrote hymns that were sung in the liturgy. So he taught the people the congregation through his hymns, but he also he taught um, he taught the people who would serve the liturgy, the clergy, and the deacons and the deaconesses, and 
that part of Ephraim, you can see he was a great scholar. You can, he was very learned in his knowledge of Bible and his knowledge of theology is very deep. So he taught the clergy, the deacons, the deaconesses, the choirs, so that they could all teach the people Correct. through the liturgy itself. I sometimes tell my students, they need to think of liturgy as a kind of school. It's, it's the place you went to learn. And it's the place where, of course, um, Syriac language kept that teaching alive through all these many centuries. But you're right, that means it's, it's coming to the people.